Hello and welcome back to Reptiles and Research. So in today's video we're doing a review of Acadia's Thermal Zoo Pro. So I've had this product for over two years now and I've been using it the entire time on my king snakes. So what we're going to do in this review, we're going to look at the pricing, what the actual product is, what you can do with it, how you can use it to replicate the sun as much as possible or as closely as possible and what is it like to use long term. So let's look at the Thermal Zoo Pro. On the side of the Thermal Zoo Pro, there is Arcadia's branding. The entire unit is basically one big black chassis with two domes on top. So on the ends of basically the metal body of the Thermal Zoo Pro, there is little hole inlets for the cables to go into to supply the power. The twin domes on top, again, are controlled separately, but are positioned nicely in the middle and they're braced in place with metal plating and screws. So they're not going loose anytime soon. They're firmly held in place. If we look at the underside, basically we have our central domes poking through in the center. And then we have either a Jungle Dawn or a UVB bulb on the sides, but it's angled slightly. So they're pointing towards the center at a center point that all lamps would basically hit at. Now the ballasts of both the Pro T5 and the Jungle Dawn LED bar are fastened in place with a little metal clip. That little metal clip is on the actual metal body and then you can press your ballast into place and that holds very snugly and it's not coming out anytime soon. What's really cool is that we have a link cable so that we can power both bulbs that are on the ends against each other so that we can have all power coming from one plug. Now the link cable goes in really nicely. You just pop it into both ends of the ballast that's opposing the side where the mains goes into. Now the Thermal Zoo Pro often comes with a Arcadia solar flood which is a heat bulb and a deep heat projector. Or there is an alternative configuration that you can get where it's two heat lamps. What I would actually recommend is putting in a LED spotlight just to really brighten up that basking spot beneath the Thermal Zoo Pro up to a level that you can't really achieve with any configuration without the LED spotlight. You will notice that the LED spotlight that I'm using in this example doesn't really fit with the cage guard over it. So keep that in mind for anything that you want to use that doesn't come with the actual kit. The wire cables at both ends of the Thermal Zoo Pro means that you can mount it anywhere you want. Now, if you're using the link cable, you're gonna have three plugs that need to be plugged in somewhere. All of them have a on off switch on the actual cable so that you can have control that way but you can't really have less than three the link cable brings you down from four to three but at the minimum you've got three plugs so let's talk about what the sun actually gives off and what we're going to try and do to try and well as match that as most as we can with what we're going to try and do here so Obviously in sunlight, all wavelengths are all together, all matched and blended perfectly. There is no like this part does this and this part does this and it's different bulbs at different sections of an area. It's all blended lovely, fantastically. And the wavelengths they give off can be categorized in little sections. Now I've got plenty of videos on this channel that goes into this in depth. So we're going to skim over it here just to show you why I would use a certain configuration to try and match this. So in sunlight, you have basically your UV portion, your visible light portion and your infrared portion. What you want is to supply bulbs that match or represent and supply those. So that they're represented in your enclosure, then you're basically representing at least each chunk of sunlight for your basking spot. So your heat lamps will provide your infrared bit. Your LED spotlights or the Jungle Dawn bar really nicely fills in the visible light and then the T5 UVB bar is going to fill in the UV section for us. So in terms of configuration, basically you at least want to have those three represented in some form or another. So your heat lamp, good. You've got your infrared, check. Your Jungle Dawn LED gives you a visible light, check. Your UV bar on the other side gives you a UV, check. Now you can either add another heat lamp just to spread the basking spot in terms of the infrared across for a longer animal if you want, or you can do what I did and add an LED spotlight. So it provides the intensity of brightness of visible light that closer to the brightness of sunlight, but not quite, but it's brighter than without it. So what I would actually do is have a UV and then UV on both sides. One, because it's cheaper to buy. 
Secondly, because it means that the UVB isn't so lopsided, which I'll show you in a minute. It means it's like even on both sides and then stacks nicely and blends in the middle. We've just missed out on having our visible light there from taking out the Jungle Dawn. But if we put in a $30 LED spotlight, not only does that give us intensity, but it gives us the visible light spectrum. So let's move to a demonstration of light levels when you turn each of these bulbs on independently. This is it without any lights on. Then what we're gonna do is turn on our heat lamp and you can see it's a nice warm orange glow. That's the incandescent. Then what we're gonna do is turn on both the Jungle Dawn in this example and the the T5 because I've got them linked. There we go, we've got brightness at the basking spot. Okay, now this typically is what would be most people would be done, but with my like added customization, I've added the LED spotlight. So let's turn on the LED spotlight. There we go, we really see that brightness increase at this basking spot. But the brightness of everything just ramps up. Now in this example, it looks like it got darker because the camera is like focusing on the LED spot, but I can tell you it to the visible eye, everything just gets super bright. So the LED spotlight for me is really important. So let's show how lopsided this is when we actually just have the one T5. So this is a solar meter. Now this is gonna measure the UV output. So in dead center where I've used this coaster as a marker, it's all blending. As we move towards the ends of the actual bulb, it drops because the UV intensity is, is the most intense at the center of a T5 bulb. As we move away towards the other side, away from the Pro T5 ballast, it drops. So the UV intensity is actually lopsided, leaning towards where the, actually, where the actual UV bulb actually is, which makes sense, but you wanna take into consideration when you're actually trying to plan a basking spot. As you can see, as we move towards the bulb on the far end, the number increases. It's gone up to seven there in that example. So you can really see how lopsided it is if you just have your UV on one side. That's why I would recommend having UV on both sides so that it blends in the middle. Again, I would always recommend having one of these solar meters so you can check the UVI that you're providing and make sure that you're not overexposing your animal. But that's a subject for a whole other video. See, this is just the heat lamp. So the actual amount of brightness of lux, the illuminance is not that high. Next, we're gonna turn on both the Jungle Dawn and the T5, and that jumps up to 24,000, basically 25,000 lux. And then the LED spotlight, now that is ramping that up right up to 160,000 lux. Now, true midday sunlight on a sunny day might be around 200,000. So you can really see without the LED spotlight, how dark your basking spot really is. Now, what most people don't realize is that they're actually providing like 5 a.m. levels of illuminance in a basking spot because we're really not providing that intensity of visible light. So that LED spotlight really, really adds to the basking spot. So the Thermal Zoo Pro basically as a unit, as a metal frame, basically angles things nicely into a center point for the wavelengths to blend. Now, if you're doing something in a vivarium with a ceiling and you're screwing in your lights to the ceiling, now there's, there's a way to basically blend the wavelengths like this using different rotating E27 fittings, but that's a subject for another video. If you don't have access to them, or in the US you don't have access to them, you're gonna find it really difficult to actually blend the wavelengths so they're actually all blended into like one spot. What's really nice is that the Thermal Zoo Pro does that for you, and if you've got a screen mesh, realistically it's the only way that I know of that's physically possible for you to actually blend the wavelengths. Otherwise you get infrared there, visible light there, UV there, and the animal can like, yeah, shuttle between, but sunlight is blended and for it to be the most natural basking spot you can get you really want to blend those wavelengths so in terms of what the films of pro can actually do for you in terms of just blending the wavelengths that's just a really good job so let's talk about price so you're gonna have to do a little bit of research there but i will use one example to show you that it's, it's a pretty good price now the entire thing is quite expensive at the moment i'm using swell reptiles as the example of where to purchase from if we're going for the twin uv example that i've recommended you're basically having to spend 165 pounds and you might think like christ that sounds like a lot and it is a lot but it's also not a lot when you think about how much it costs to buy each of these bulbs independently because when you buy the Thermal Zoo Pro you get all the bulbs with 
the actual metal frame. So when you buy all the bulbs independently, it would be £205. So you've gone from £205 without the ability to blend the wavelengths to £165 with the ability to blend the wavelengths. Now, to me, you're actually getting more and you're paying less than what you would do to actually get these bulbs if you bought it independently. So 165 quid, add on 30 quid to get your LED spotlight and swap the bulbs out. That's sort of your price. Now, some of the bulbs, like the, the, the deep heat projector, you can probably sell secondhand and recoup some of that money. But it's not a it's not a bad price. And if you're looking to use it on something like a bearded dragon, well, something that's like really heliothermic and wants that prime basking spot for the daylight, then something like that, you can't go, really go wrong with a thermal zoo probe. It's, 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 it is really good. I mean, I've been using it on my king snake for around two years now and and it re has reasonably gone really really well i didn't use it on my bearded dragon because i've done the example of like the custom thing with with rotating fittings to actually recreate what the film zoo pro can do for me just on the inside ceiling of a vivarium but for the most part i think the thermal zoo pro is, is pretty good i would really look at some of the other guides on the channel to see why you want to do some of these things and the science of like recreating sunlight recreating you can find a link to the thermal zoo pro below other than that subscribe for more videos like this and i'll see you in another video